The railway has to decarbonise to remain relevant. We cannot afford to convert the railway to an electric railway at our current rates. We have to reduce the cost of electrification. Technology like the composite pantograph horn allows us to reduce the amount of bridge clearance works required when we convert the railway to an electric railway. It also reduces the amount of disruption to our passengers and to our lines and neighbours. The pantograph is essentially a mechanical arm fitted to trains that run up and down the UK and it contacts the overhead wire above the train uh, to conduct power down into the vehicle, powering the motors, powering uh, electrical systems such as the air conditioning and, and all the control systems. The objective is to allow the pantograph to operate at a much lower height uh, by reducing the electrical clearances required and that will ultimately reduce the cost of electrification for network rail allowing them to fit wires much closer to the vehicle roof and ultimately reduce the cost of travel throughout the UK. One of the biggest challenges whenever we change anything on the pantograph is that there is a fine dynamic balance between the contact between pantograph and overhead wire and anything we change will then have an impact on the mass of the pan head and on the aerodynamic performance so we need to be able to prove categorically that any modifications we make won't negatively affect the performance of the current collection. At this present time, we're testing a pantograph, which has two slightly different designs associated with it. They've introduced an insulating horn, which is to improve safety, and we're testing its performance and required clearances, as well as uh, the standard pantograph horn. And that means that we apply a lightning impulse voltage of 193 kilovolts peak to work out the minimum clearance that will stop flashover. By establishing the minimum clearances required, there could be a significant cost saving for network rail in that they can use existing infrastructure, such as bridges and tunnels, without major civil works. Network Rail has, has brought us together with Southampton University uh, to fill a, a gap in our capabilities. We are certainly capable of testing the dynamic and the mechanical properties of the pantograph, but from an electrical standpoint, we also need to be able to prove that the insulative properties uh, of the new equipment is sufficient for use on the UK network, uh, and that it actually does what we've set out to do, which is reduce the electrical clearances of the pantograph. Great Western is involved with this trial as the operator who has fitted these horns first to the units actually in traffic. So we've been getting real live data as to how they're working in a real environment. The trial's gone really well. We were trying to see how much wear that we would see on the horns and so far the wear has been absolutely minimal that we've actually had to the extent we've done over 600,000 miles on the fleet of four trains in 2,000 days in operation and we can barely stay anywhere at all. Working with Network Rail's Technical Authority and Great Western Railway, we assessed our overhead line for the impact of fitting insulated horns and were part of, of then allowing the trial to happen on our infrastructure to demonstrate that there'd be no detrimental impact of the new insulated horn. We hope that the horns become established nationally, that this becomes the normal approach to pantographs, and, and that then leads on to future electrification, taking those benefits of of being able to have a safer, smaller life clearance, and then the knock-on economic benefits of, of lower cost design for electrification. And that then rolls into the hope that we can decarbonize the rail network nationally at a lower cost.